Welcome back to Remember This Tech. Today we're going to be revisiting an old operating system, Windows Vista Ultimate. Now it's not that old really, but the reason why I wanted to revisit it is I wanted to look at the features and functions and what's good and what's bad. Some people hated it, some people loved it, but without Windows Vista there probably wouldn't be any Windows 7, which we all know that was an awesome operating system for a long time. We're going to build the ultimate Windows Vista PC. We're gonna set it up with two dual 8800 GTS live video cards, one of the top end motherboards for that time. And we're gonna go and explore the ins and outs of that operating system and see how well it performs. Enough talking, let's get into it, let's go, come on. Today, in behind me is, dun dun dun. We have EVGA 780 Sly motherboard. And back in the day when this was released, it costs about $260 if you were lucky. And to pair that with the system setup, we're going to add two sticks of DDR2 at 8,500. And hopefully it can handle a little bit of overclock if we decide to do that. But not only that, but we're pairing it with a Core 2 Quad 9, 9550 CPU at 2.83 gigahertz. One of the most powerful back in the day, but hopefully it'll give these cards a little bit of room to stretch their legs. To go with that, I have a, not one, but two NVIDIA 8800 GTS 640 meg PCI Express video cards. These were released in, two, in the end of 2006, and they retailed for around $449 each. This one right here is my original. It still works fine, but I just bought this one off of eBay, and I have my original Sly bridge connector here, still in the package. Get into upgrading the system into Vista and test out those games in all their Sly glory, or not, We'll find out, but we're gonna test the system and see how they play those games. Pair that, we've got a Cooler Master Gold 550 power supply, modular, fully modular. And I even have a back plate for this motherboard. So come along with me today. We're going to try to set this up. Maybe we'll go with two Raptor 150s in RAID because I picked up two Raptor 150s. So come along with me on this journey, a journey to find out if all this stuff works and a journey to Go back in time to revisit the glory of a super powerful system from the end of 2006, 2007, 26 years ago. But in 2023, come on, let's get going on this build. Let's get it done quick and get to gaming. Come on. We're going to mount a cooler on it because this is the Zalman 9500 and it is a pure copper it's actually six heat pipes one on each side and it is an orb cooler and it should provide plenty of cooling on the cpu especially if we go to overclock it a bit i'm going to set this up and mount it on the board set this up mount the board in the case and then get ready to hook up all the peripherals we'll just show you a quick snippet of the quick build and then we'll get right into the meat of things seeing how these cards perform. This board is unique in that it does have floppy and it also has IDE, but it also has four SATA and it supports RAID 1 and 0. So we have plenty of options and it has a diagnostic LED to tell you if something's off or wrong. So without further ado, let's get this cooler on. Let's get this in the case. Let's get moving. Come on, I can't wait. So you might have noticed I replaced this big case here from the other one because this one has more three and a half inch bays in case I want to put mechanical drives in here and test a RAID setup with Raptor to go true old school. And you'll notice this teeny, teeny, tiny fan exhaust. I'm replacing it with this one to get better cooling. So I'm going to get to this, update you of those changes. I decided to pop this front case off and put on this anemic intakes, but this is what I have, so 
I think maybe I could just get it in here and then maybe I can get a little bit more intake and basically we'll have a complete airflow through the system. And later on I can uh, get a better one in here, but it might impede the drive clearance, so I'm gonna test it with one screw. Yeah, it's gonna be tight. We'll see how it works. Let's just go with that. Just gotta put all these silver bolts through, but, and then secure it to the board, but really, I'm gonna do one at a time because you technically have to hold it to get the back plate screws on, otherwise it'll fall out. And then what I'll do is, the other one's in one at a time. This one kind of holds it for me. About the same height as the standoff. What I don't like about it is that it's plastic for its mounting, but it, it's hard, hard plastic, but you know, it's just not metal. I mean, and it, and it does the job. It's a great cooler, it's just, it worries me. And you don't want to tighten them down too far, too tight because you've got to get the screws lined up to get through the holes. And you get the idea. Basically you gotta make sure he gets flush and secure. Don't over torque it, tighten him down. You gotta hold the, the nut in the back when you turn it easy. Put some thermal paste, cooler goes like so. And then this is the only thing that holds it in place with these two brass screws. Awesome, great. All right, let's get to it. Got a fresh tube of Arctic MX4 thermal paste we're gonna use. Hopefully keep these temps cool for this old quad core system and this cooler. And securing the, one of the most crucial parts of the build, this Zalman 9500 heatsink. And ensure you don't cut yourself on the fins. That would be a bad day. And it's all copper on the base and the heat pipes and the radiator and fins. So it's gonna be way superior than any other, you know, socket 775 standard Intel heat sink that it came with. There we are. Let's find a place to plug this in and get this board into the case. Let's go. I got this magnifying LED light for my birthday. It has made things a lot easier to see smaller serial numbers or pinouts on when you're working on fine boards and stuff like that and you can't see stuff. It puts a light right where you need it and it gives you a magnifying and you can adjust the tones and the hues of the colors of the LED as well. So honestly, if you want to check this out in the description below, it has helped me tremendously. So I'll put it down there if you want to check it out. This might be visible here, but these are two Raptor 10,000 RPM, 150 gig drives. I'm going to try to set up RAID 0. Um, I had it running on 236 gigs back in the day, but we're going to try this on these. If they're good and there's nothing wrong with them, then we're gonna, gonna try the build with that. Sometimes there's problems loading the RAID drivers, um, Windows, I'm gonna have to get a floppy set up probably. Let's get to it. Got everything buttoned up in place. Now it's time to test it out, load it up, put the two Raptors in here. Who knows, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. And yes, yes, got this slide bridge in, yes. systems together, test monitor is up because this only has DVI output and we are going to try to power it up, maybe load RAID drivers, 
see how that goes. I prepped a uh, floppy, external USB floppy with the RAID drivers for the VGA board. Time to power it on, fingers crossed. Oh, well, power. Um, we need to go into the BIOS. Oh, no, okay. First things first, it posted. I'm in the BIOS. I can hear the leaf blowers going. All of the systems are running. I'm gonna do a quick cut screen. I'll show you what it looks like from my phone view. Be right back and we'll get on. The EVGA 980i Sly system is up and running with both NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GTS cards in play. Looks like we have pretty good cooling. Raptors. All right, so far so good. BIOS is up, let's go. Bear with the noise here as we configure some settings. Okay, we don't have anything on IDE, obviously, because I didn't put anything on there. Seize the four gig of memory, great. The date is good, time is good, means the CMOS battery is good from the buyer that I bought this from. Yep, seize the USB floppy, which I might need to use to load the RAID driver from. First device, removable, which would mean the floppy. Yep, yep. Second, CD-ROM, just in case you're gonna boot from that in old school, in case it doesn't pick up the USB. And we have your hard disk. I kinda like that logo, so I'm turning it on. Chipset features, system clocks, you can overclock it. 2.83 gigahertz. Okay, so we're not really gonna mess with that. We just wanna get the system up and running. And then mainly there's our overclocking. This is the case that I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna see if I can get these Raptors to run in RAID 0. And I don't know which one's SATA 1, SATA 2, but I think it's SATA 6. Ports and 5 maybe, I think. We'll see how this works. And USB, well, Let's see what the Sysmon tells us, or temps. CPU is at 40C. That is not bad so far for this quad core. Hopefully you can keep it under 50C. We will see. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended, but this is a good CPU cooler. I think it's going to be all right. All right. F10 for the raid, which we have to do. Seize the raptors. Yay! So we have mirrored, which would be raid zero, striped raid one. You can do the raid five on here, but we're gonna go raid zero, no redundancy, no fault tolerance, maximum speed. And we want to add them. Gate, okay. We need both of these in here, and we need that one too. Great, there's my array. And we need to finish. And that would be F. So we say yes. Clear MBR, yes. Now we see we have our mirrored RAID 0. Okay. B, B set is bootable. And we check marked it, so hopefully it's bootable. Fingers crossed. Haven't done this in about 15 years, so. Yep. So today we're gonna use, not Windows XP, not Windows 7, but Windows Vista Ultimate. Yeah, I know some people hated it, but with Service Pack 2, it got pretty well polished. A lot of the kinks worked out of it. And you know what? We're gonna try it in this Ultimate build. It's around the same time era as these video cards came out and this motherboard. So 2006, 2007 era. So we're gonna do it. And today, let's get going. Windows Vista was the precursor to seven and there was many problems with it in the beginning, but it initially needed to have tweaks and patches, but they earned it out. You either loved it or hated it back then. Had a lot of features, functions, widgets. Personally didn't care for the widgets. 
it was a huge step in the right direction. It paved the way for Windows 7. So here we are. We got English U and we have Service Pack 2 already in the system. And sees my RAID array with my Raptors. That is very nice. And we will just say, all right. And we're copying Vista Ultimate Edition over. Let's hear the uh, fan noise in the Raptors. Let's see if you can hear the Raptors going now. They don't seem to be really thrashing much, so. I'm gonna have to do speed tests on them. This RAID 0 configuration to actually see if it's working great or not. And one of these um, cards, NVIDIA cards, is getting really, really hot. Well, I'll set this continue installing. Windows Vista. thrashing you're used to. Oh, we're almost here. We have our first desktop Windows Vista Ultimate Service Pack 2 booting up. I forgot. There's so many little tweaks to do. Please wait while Windows checks your computer's performance. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Windows. All right. Finally, we're getting to the desktop. This is Windows Vista. Do you standard Windows Vista, the initial desktop screen when you come on? It shows up with my Core 2 Quad 9550, 2.83 gigahertz, 4 giga RAM with the Windows Vista Ultimate. I don't have any drivers to slide yet, but you can see the computer details, different things, more details, and it goes right into this some setup for where you could actually like check and score your system and go into the device manager. There's an error on one of these cards. So we need drivers. And we need to put some chipset drivers in here. A few other things. But uh, it loaded the Enforce RAID controller drivers system, the ATA, serial ATA drivers, everything. It's pretty cool, pretty nice. All right, I'm gonna copy over some uh, drivers here. Go from there, I'll be right back. So Windows Vista Ultimate. Surprisingly, with the RAID Zero Raptor 150 gigs, they are providing pretty snappy performance. Plus this quad-core CPU and four gig of RAM on this. Be really interested to see the rest of this system, how it performs. But let me show you a little bit about Windows Vista and what made it unique in the day. And we'll start off with widgets. Well, Windows Vista, love it or hate it, had widgets. Like you can configure these widgets, here's notes, just type notes, like a mini notepad thing. Uh, this is CPU usage, RAM usage. You can put widgets on your desktop and do whatever you want. So people love that, I guess, or they hated it. It's all up to the individual. But we have a few more drivers to install, but, and you had 3D Arrow Desktop, which we could do. Um, I need to install the NVIDIA graphics drivers to get the system up and running 100% to enable the 3D bar, the 3D um, desktop. But um, let me finish this up. So we've got some video drivers installed, and I pulled up GPUZ and Afterburner. GPUZ shows the first temperature for the GPU at 64C. Now, that seems a bit high because the second GPU is at 
Celsius. And this is idle, not running games. What does that tell me? Well, that tells me that we're gonna probably have to take it apart and reapply thermal paste on the first um, 8800 GTS because it's running idle at almost 10 degrees Celsius above the other one. That is not great. Hence the reason why it's so important to reapply thermal paste and clean these old video cards to reduce temperatures and improve performance. We can see that the temperature for my, it, it correlates with the same thing from MSI. So NVIDIA, and you can see how we have two, one and two. That's a good thing. Supports DirectX 10, currently running at 513 megahertz for the GPU clock with 792 megahertz for the memory. Let's look at the other one. And it's the same stats. So, this is good. So we're going to try, now that we have those, to capture here and clean it up and see if we drop those ambient idle temps down. Now we should test in a second some games under full load or a stress test and we can see if it does anything. Maybe we'll run the Haven benchmark. That's a good idea. Let's do that. All right, so we got the Haven benchmark. Let's see if we can't get it running. Maybe set up and monitor a few temps. And let's run this. I have hope that we can run this at acceptable frame rates. So let's see. Oh wow, FPS 11. Temperature is at 69 Celsius. And we're at 1680 by 1050. So DirectX 9. 1280 by 720p. And we shouldn't have any problems running that, right? FPS is back, is up to 19 now. Yay! GPU temps running around 72. So I guess our temps are better. Roughly 10 Celsius from the reapplication and cleaning of new thermal paste. And you know, that's not too terrible. I'll take that as a win. So clean and reapply new thermal paste to your video card, everyone, especially if it's old. Just did the benchmark for Crystal Dismark Raptor, the 250 gig NK Raptor drives in RAID 0. This is very abysmal score. Um, yeah, maybe one of the drives is bad or maybe they were always this slow. Couldn't be, but hey, it's just what it is. They're only 150 megabits per second drive, I guess. But uh, I thought it would be a lot faster than this. So I guess we're gonna have to upgrade to an SSD. So not one, but two things died on my Windows Ultimate Vista build. Well, here's what I'm gonna say right off the bat. When you're dealing with retro builds with old tech, you gotta keep in mind that old tech dies. And what died in my build? Well, one of the 8800 GTSs that I'd ordered from eBay died. My original one still works, the one I had from 2006 when I first bought it and I re-thermal pasted that, and it still works great. But after I had Windows Vista Ultimate up and running with my Raptor 150 RAID 0 array, one of those drives died. And 
thereby killed my whole Vista build operating system because as you know, RAID 0 is meant for speed and there's no fault to tolerance. One drive dies, kills the whole, or whole array. If I had it in RAID 1, it probably would have survived, but I, would have had, I wouldn't have had the speed. Thereby, I accepted those risks when I built it that way. So keep in mind when you're building a retro build, old tech dies. You don't know when, but odds are the older it gets, the greater the chance there will be that it will have a failure. I'm going to revisit this Windows Vista Ultimate build in the near future. I'm gonna have to change a few things up because some of my parts failed, obviously, and some are harder to get than others. That's the way it is. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so because there's tons of cool content coming up and you don't wanna miss it. So thanks for coming along with me on this journey and thanks for watching Remember This Tech.